Hi everyone, today we are going to study congestion control algorithms. So what are congestion control algorithms? Basically when too many packets are present in a subnet, the performance of the subnet degrades. And this situation is called congestion because the amount of packets are more than that the subnet can handle at any given point of time. So hence the network becomes congested or the subnet becomes congested and this situation is then called congestion. Congestion causes choking of the communication medium. The communication medium basically gets choked. Now the medium has a specific bandwidth or a specific amount of data that it can handle at any given point of time. Just like a narrow road gets congested when there are too many vehicles in that road because there is a specific capacity of that road and if there are vehicles beyond its uh, capacity the road gets choked and we call it congestion or traffic jam similarly in the network also we have congestion when the there are more number of packets than the capacity of the network medium the medium gets choked and this phenomenon is known as your congestion and obviously this will degrade the performance of the subnet in terms that the time amount of time that will be taken to transmit the packet would be larger or and in some cases some packets may even be dropped now uh, to deal with congestion we have congestion control algorithms and there are two basic congestion control algorithms that we have the leaky bucket uh, algorithm and the token bucket algorithm in today's video we are going to study the leaky bucket algorithm so what is the leaky bucket algorithm this algorithm helps or allows controlling the rate at which data packet is injected. <clears throat> See, basically congestion occurs because the number of packets that are injected in the network are more than the capacity of the network medium, transmission medium. So basically, if you control the rate at which these packets are ingested, uh, injected, this will, uh, to a lot of extent, um, uh, avoid congestion. So basically this is what the leaky bucket algorithm is doing. It is controlling the rate at which a data packet is injected into the network and then it manages the burstiness in the data rate. Like you have bursty data wherein a lot of data all together is injected into, pack, into the packet and that would automatically lead to congestion. So if the data arrives or is injected in the uh, network at a constant rate and not in bursts, then obviously this can handle the situation and lead uh, uh, and hence avoid congestion. Now if you see the figure here, this figure shows the leaky bucket algorithm. So we assume the subnet to be a bucket which has a leak or a hole. The packets are coming at a constant rate and, and they are being uh, they are going from the uh, network or they are leaking from the network at a constant rate again. So basically the incoming packets and this shows the outgoing packets. You see there are uh, approximately five incoming packets and there are three outgoing packets. So no matter at what rate the packets are entering the subnet, they will leave the subnet at a cons fixed constant rate. So we assume the packets to be water being uh, filled in the bucket. We uh, assume the um, network to be a bucket with a hole this hole means that the size of the hole will determine at what rate rate the water will leak out of the bucket no matter how much water you fill but the uh, according to the size of the hole the water will leak out at a constant rate similarly no matter how many packets you insert or inject in the network the data the packets will flow out of the network at a constant rate. So this is the concept of a leaky bucket algorithm. Now uh, in the leaky bucket algorithm, a bucket with a volume of say B bytes, as I said, the bucket represents the subnet and the data uh, uh, is represented by water. So uh, if I assume that the capacity of the bucket is B bytes and there is a hole, as I said, at the bottom of the bucket. Now, if the bucket is empty, it means B bytes are available as storage. That means if the network is empty, we can um, we can uh, ensure that uh, you can accommodate B bytes in the network as that is the capacity of the network. Now, if we imagine a bucket with a small hole, now we are imagining that we have the bucket. 
in which we are going to fill the water as i said bucket represents subnet water represents data packets so if i imagine the bucket with a small hole at the bottom then no matter as i told you in the beginning itself that no matter at what rate water is entering the bucket outflow will be constant as per the size of the hole at the bottom so when bucket is filled with water additional water if at a very bursty rate the water is being filled then additional water will obviously spill over the sides of the bucket right no matter if even if there is a hole at the bottom of the bucket but even then if you uh, fill uh, water at a very high rate then despite being leaked at a constant rate from the bottom the additional water will leak or spill out of the edges of the bucket so similarly if you have bursty data a lot of data beyond the capacity of the subnet then even if the um, in normal conditions even if the packets are leaving the network or going out of the network at a constant rate but if you have a bursty data that data will be lost that means that data will be spilled out just like additional water spills out of the edges of the bucket additional data will be lost or dropped so here you can uh, see we can imagine the situation these are the data packets this is the subnet this is the rate at which the data packets are flowing out of the subnet so the leaky bucket representation of this is somewhat like this this is the flow of water and this is the bucket and this is the hole at the bottom of the bucket and no matter at what rate the water is entering inside the bucket the outflow is constant so inflow can be bursty and when the inflow is bursty and the bucket is already full no matter even if the water is flowing out at a constant rate some water will spill out of the edges of the bucket so this is the concept of your leaky bucket algorithm so uh, similar to the leaky bucket each network interface contains a leaky bucket right interface means uh, the uh, point of communication so each interface helps the incoming packets to go out of the network so each network interface contains a leaky bucket and then the following steps are involved in a leaky bucket algorithm so what are these steps when a host wants to send a packet packet is thrown into the bucket whenever the host is ready and wants to send a packet it will throw the packets into the bucket which is basically nothing but your subnet now we know that the bucket leaks at a leaks at a constant rate that means the data flows out of the subnet at a constant rate meaning that network interface trans obviously this is what i said that the bucket leaks at a constant rate means that the network interface is transmitting packets at a constant rate now if the traffic is bursty it is converted to uniform traffic by leaky bucket if it is a bursty traffic the leaky bucket will uh, convert it into a uniform traffic and then transmit it at a constant rate so in practice the bucket can be assumed as of as a finite queue in the network that outputs the data at the finite rate so this leaky bucket algorithm and the token bucket algorithm are also known as traffic shaping algorithms that because they shape the traffic so that the data flows at a constant rate and does not cause any congestion